Welcome back. Now, globally, travel and tourism has proved itself as a resilient sector. The industry has been able to survive waves of change, and even in a local sense, the South African travel and tourism sector proved its resilience and ability to overcome crises since 2008 and the post-2010 World Cup lull. Despite various challenges, the tourism industry is expected to grow, and the outlook for 2014 is positive. Joining us, we have Gillian Saunders, Principal and Head of Advisory Services at Grant Thornton, Johannes and Salif Siro, CEO of the Tourism Enterprise Partnership. Thank you so much uh, for making the time to join us. Salif, let me perhaps uh, start with you. What accounts for this resilience? Why, when uh, the, the world is in a global economic downturn, we see tourism numbers strong and robust? Uh, well, I'd like to believe uh, uh, that uh, this is due to the amount of work that has been done to really promote South Africa as a tourism destination. Uh, and you, you can count uh, uh, 2010, uh, for instance, as uh, the event that has uh, allowed us to position South Africa as a tourism destination. And all the work that has been done at that time, we are now starting to see uh, the, fruit, uh, the, the fruit of that. Dylan, would you also um, you know, attribute this to hard marketing work and big international events, or is there more to what meets the eye? Well, I think South Africa's success is partially due to, well, 2010 was a major, major marketing event for tourism, mm. it really was, and it helped us significantly. We've got some good tourism marketing going on, but the resilience is almost a global factor, it's not just a South African thing. That the, let's look at two factors that drive travel. One is business. Business is global. People need to travel for business. People mm. need to travel within a country for business. And all of that is driving ongoing business travel, conferences and events. The other thing is that the more developed a, a country becomes, mm. tourism and leisure travel becomes almost like a right. It's in your culture. You take holidays. You take three or four holidays a year. So our emerging markets also are starting to have a growing middle class in India and China that will carry on doing that. Mm. And then when there is some sort of a lull, there's always like pent up demand. So people can't travel for personal reasons and financial reasons. They say, as soon as I've got enough money, I'm travelling again. Are you aware of any data that suggests that you know one of, one of the trends that seems to come through from a consumer perspective is that consumers are buying less stuff and going more for the experiences. Have you got any data that suggests that actually people are looking? You know, tra tourism is actually replacing consumption in a lot of in a, in a lot of ways. I've got no data on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we go through you know we go through cycles and trends. So and depending also where people are in terms of maturity in an emerging market, mm -hmm. particularly, there might be a lot more material purchases of goods, and then that switches over to travel and tourism at some point in a maturity uh, mm -hmm. sort of cycle. Mm -hmm. Where uh, go ahead, Christian. Where are the opportunities for small businesses in this sector? Well, uh, the, the, the opportunities in the small businesses essentially are in uh, really uh, culture, heritage, uh, uh, tourism. Uh, many of uh, the tourists who are coming to South Africa are now really interested in uh, uh, discovering the people, uh, discovering the ways of uh, doing things here. So cultural tourism is uh, definitely a big, big uh, draw card uh, for us. And uh, many of uh, the tourism businesses that we support as TEP are looking to basically uh, uh, evolve in that uh, in that area uh, of uh, of activity. If we look at you know domestic uh, tourism versus international tourists, um, where are we seeing the greatest uh, demand and the greatest activity in South Africa? Uh, Julia. Well, it's actually a bit of one and the other. We've got far more domestic tourists, far, far, far more domestic tourism trips of the order of between 25 and 30 million. Our counting isn't necessarily robust. There's no borders to go through, so we don't know for sure. And that includes business tourists and leisure tourists. Mm. But the average spends are much lower. So when you take a look at the spending per se, then even though we've got far less foreign tourists, the spend's much higher, so the actual economic impact is greater. Or it's about, uh, you know, I don't have those numbers in my head, but it's about equal, I think. So, the, you know, the far more domestic tourists spending a little bit less on average. So we need both. The best countries in the world in terms of tourism, especially leisure tourism, is always considered if you've got a strong, robust domestic industry that supports and, and helps drive a strong, robust foreign industry. Because, as I say, if you have the Victorian Alfred waterfront in Cape Town, couldn't survive without domestic tourism. Yeah. But we've got that for our foreign tourists because we have enough domestic tourists to get drive a development like that. Again, anecdotally, you know, you, we talked about the, the 2010 World Cup, but the African, the, the Cup of Nations that, that we end up, the, the local Africa Cup, Cup of, of Nations, Nations, which we hosted locally earlier this year, it, it, it highlighted just how good we'd actually be, become at actually attracting intra African mm -hmm. travel. Is it? Are we actually? Is is there still much of a growth market there? Are the opportunities still for more African tourists coming into South Africa? I 
think we've got a maturity thing to look at there as well. The African tourists who came, a lot of them came for shopping for personal reasons and shopping for trading. Right. As those African markets develop by themselves, the Mozambicans are coming less. Mm. Mm. You know, the Malawians can come less. Ma Malawi is maybe a bad example, but certainly Nigeria, yeah. they won't need to come here. So we've got to move our marketing and what we attract them here for from just being pure personal medical shopping type reasons to they want to come to this country because right. it's got things to offer like entertainment um, things to see and do and activities that they enjoy and I think we're starting to do that but actually this year for instance we've seen the lowest growth in our African land border arrivals for years and years and years it's only been about 1.9 percent maybe Salif I'm going to be a little political and broad here I mean we often hear about you know the Africa growth story and how the world is looking to Africa as the new frontier market would those political uh, dynamics also, um, you know, push tourism uh, numbers to Africa just because Africa is the next big thing to do? I definitely think that uh, Africa is developing as, uh, as uh, uh, an economic powerhouse uh, generally. Mm. And uh, we are moving slowly uh, towards a consumer society in many of uh, the African countries as well. And we know that from a consumer uh, economy point of view, when people uh, are now happy with uh, the houses that they live in, the cars that they drive, and, and so on and so forth, they are going to start to look for leisure activities uh, that will basically confirm uh, their, their status as uh, people who are, have uh, moved up, up the ladder. And the tourism uh, being um, a, a consumer product, uh, essentially, would be one of those uh, economies, mm. uh, sectors of the economy, uh, which will start to benefit from that, uh, that, uh, that, that trend. I want to come back to a question Chris asked earlier about, and, and you know, there's obviously opportunities for entrepreneurs here, but I get the sense it's very much a boom and bust type environment. You go through you know, very, very, very tourism being very, very cyclical. How do we keep those entrepreneurs in the system and keep their, you know, make sure that they develop sustainable business models that get them through, the, through that? Okay. Uh, well, in fact, that's, uh, that's really the mandate of the Tourism Enterprise Partnership. Our mandate is to assist um, tourism SMEs to grow and uh, become sustainable. Uh, and we do that by providing basically a package of uh, interventions. We call them business development mm. services, from mentoring to market access to access to finance and so on and so forth. And uh, it is a well-established practice that um, um, uh, you can use uh, b uh, business development services to promote an industry and make sure that uh, uh, smaller players get their fair share of, uh, of, of, of the market. Would so at this point in time, um, um, our main focus is really to facilitate the access to the, uh, to the channel, to the uh, sales channel for our SMEs. Are you delivering on that mandate and how, do we, how, does, how, do, how does the sector then end up judging you? Well, we believe that we are delivering on that mandate. Uh, we, ha we pursue targets every year. Uh, our business plan is very clear. We need to achieve a certain number of targets, and most of the time we achieve or exceed okay. those targets. And uh, uh, if uh, you are an SME and you know that TEP is the agency that is supposed to uh, help you achieve a particular target, mm -hmm. and uh, you come to us and you're not happy with us, I'm sure you'll tell us. Uh, many of uh, our SMEs, uh, we do surveys all the time to okay. just find out how we're doing as far as our SMEs are concerned and uh, the feedback so far is that uh, we are doing not a bad job. Good job. <laughs> if, when you look at maybe this is a good time to talk about this when you are a small business w uh, in the tourism industry what should your business plan look like? Well, the, the business plan should really look like any business plan, and I think that's where they go wrong sometimes, the small enterprises. They don't necessarily have an understanding of tourism. They often uh, mistakenly, people like municipalities in obscure areas will say, we must develop tourism, and they bring people together, and they try and get a tourism business going where there's no demand. So it's understanding your demand and understanding your markets, and that's what TEP does very well. It assists the entrepreneurs, one, to recognize if they have an opportunity, because it's no good doing things in a place where tourists don't go and then to work on how do they access the markets because that is the, the you know whatever it's like we probably still grew up being tourists and we understand a little bit about how you make a purchase of a tourism product or, or something like that those people don't even understand that they've just heard tourism is an idea they think they've got a cultural thing a theater troupe a dance troupe um, mm -hmm. a cultural site in their town but they need a lot of help to get it going and it's market access mm -hmm. what are the big things that we can actually I mean look Madiba was obviously it, it put the world's eyes on us again yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, we're competing for a global wallet at the moment. What are the big things that we can work on to be able to attract getting big, 
big numbers into the tourism sector? I mean, you know, is it business conferencing? Is it big sports events, rock concerts? I mean, what are the things that work for us that we can do and we do do well? well I'm, I'll give you my ideas. I, I believe the mega events is an important one, mm. that we should be going for an Olympics, for instance. We don't need them like Brazil's doing them two years, one after the other, but every 10, 15 years, mm do something like that. In between, business tourism is important. It's a very good selling tool. And one of our problems, okay, the biggest problem, sort out the safety and security, mm -hmm. okay? That would just quadruple or whatever. You, you, it would be mind-blowing our tourism growth because that holds us back a lot. But people come on a conference, which is organized by an association or a company, experience the country, find out it's not so bad, go back and sell it on word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And when you sell for a conference, you sell to one or two organizers to get three or four or five or a thousand people, which is a very good return on your investment mm -hmm. in marketing. And it's very direct, you know, you can find your customers. So I would go for your business tourism and mm -hmm. w within that some mega events. And oh, but safety and security would be nice yeah. to get and I think another f uh, issue that we need to look at, and uh, it is, um, uh, always being debated in the tourism industry is um, access, access, access to yeah. the country. I mm. mean, do we have enough uh, air capacity, airlift, as they call it in the industry jargon, to bring all these tourists that uh, we are marketing to? And uh, uh, the event that we are going through right now uh, has, again, refocused the global attention onto, onto South Africa. And uh, um, the, the, those, those things, uh, we need to find a final so solution. What, so what them. are the big things that we need to invest? Well, what are the big investments? We need? Air capacity is one thing, but it's very infrastructure heavy are there other things that we can invest in that are easy wins for, you know looking for the next five years what are the things that we can invest in to to, to, to get over some of those issues I mean, safety is a safety is one yeah, uh, definitely sorting out uh, the safety and security issue is uh, is uh, is one of those uh, making it uh, uh, sometimes we get feedback from uh, international tourists that uh, when they go to our uh, representations overseas mm. like our visa offices and so on and so forth uh, it is not always easy to to deal with uh, those kind of issues maybe we can look into 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 those things and just uh, make sure really uh, that uh, uh, we remove all the bottom next uh, to make the country um, an accessible destination and then I also believe that uh, um, the establishments themselves the hotels the BNBs the guest houses mm -hmm. I think we need to work on uh, our uh, quality assurance systems we need to make sure that uh, uh, the products uh, that we are offering or the services that we are offering meet um, uh, global expectation uh, and uh, those are the things uh, that will serve as the basis for us to, 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 to compete on. Um, and they're really within our power uh, to do that. If I own a guest house, it's up to me to make sure that uh, the bed is well made, that uh, uh, you know, the people who provide service do it with a smile and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So those are the little things that I will capitalize on. Julian, before we, we wrap up the session, perhaps you can talk to us about the, the new profile of the new traveler, because we're seeing a younger young and a younger demographic beginning to travel now. And in fact, I think the article refers to them as millennials. These are people who want quick, fast online uh, options where they can rate uh, the different prices and so on. I mean, how are we catering to this uh, emerging market? Well, actually, South Africa's pretty good at that generally. I think there's areas where we can improve, but South African tourism, Cape Town tourism, we've got some very good mo f mobile phone apps and various things like that, diary systems, and a lot to, to really reach those millenniums and, and to, to work through the social media and through the cell phone in terms of getting the connectivity, getting the information to them, and I want to make decisions. So we're doing quite well on that side. I think there's two or three trends though, I mean that is one, the technology and how the technology impacts our industry and it's had a huge impact, we're one of the industries with the biggest impact, especially on information and booking. Um, the other thing we're seeing is the sustainability, green tourism, volunteerism, so people traveling to destinations and wanting to help the destination, improve the destination, at least wanting the destination to be sustainable and practicing responsible tourism. So that's an important trend. Um, I had a third one, but it's left my maybe mind I, now. Maybe <laughs> I can quickly throw one into you. I mean, yeah. you know, often government takes a lot of criticism for the role that they play in it. But you know, we, we've seen something, it's actually been, 2013 has actually been a year where government has come to the party in you know, the Department of Trade and Industry in terms of, you know, we were talking, we've talked quite a lot about film over the year. It's one of those industries that people haven't realized how much investment mm -hmm. and how much effort mm -hmm. has come into it. And, and that has a tourism aspect attached to it as it well. Does. Government is they, are they doing their doing their doing the best that they could? No. Okay. Simply put, um, the World Economic Forum's um, rating of the tourism, you know, we were mm. tourism competitiveness overall was 64th. In terms of our percentage of government budget spent on tourism, 
We're 135th out of 148 countries. Mm -hmm. So what I would always say is we talk the talk. Yep. So we, 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 we do the planning, we talk the talk, but in terms of effectiveness and in terms of actual allocation of resources, the public sector doesn't do enough. National government actually doesn't do a, such a bad job. South mm -hmm. African tourism, not such a bad job. Still a low budget mm -hmm. compared to, say, Tourism Australia or whatever. But by the time we get a couple of levels below, some of our provinces are not very good, some of our bigger cities, even the big cities, as well as a lot of local municipalities where tourism can happen, they have no clue, they put no resources into it. And it's it has a public sector role, there is a public mm -hmm. sector need. It sounds as if uh, the optimism for the tourism sector in South Africa is definitely based on solid work that has been put in um, over the years. Thanks again uh, for your time. That's to Julian Saunders from Grant Thornton, Johannesburg, and Salif Sido from the Tourism Enterprise Partnership. That's all we have time for for this week's Finweek Money Matters.